Hi everybody, I'm Holly Honjo. Welcome to my channel or welcome back. I'm so glad you're here. I wanted to come on here and tell you a little bit about the worst month of my life health-wise. It's been pretty bad. So um, if you follow me on Instagram or on the community tab here on YouTube, you probably know a little bit about what I've gone through this month. Um, there is a trigger warning for this video. I will be talking about miscarriage and um, about a DNC procedure. I will give a warning once we get to that bit again, just so you can kind of skip it, although that will probably basically be till the end of the video. My husband and I, we've been trying to have a baby, our third baby, for a little bit over a year and a half now, probably. We conceived our first two absolutely no problems, um, and so we thought it'd be <laughs> super duper easy to go for the third. Unfortunately, it wasn't. Um, I don't know if you recall, I did have um, a very early miscarriage, a chemical pregnancy last year in May, and um, you know that was over pretty quickly. Didn't need any intervention um, by any doctors or anything. Um, and then fast forward to um, like September, I got myself tested. I had a couple of ultrasounds on my uterus to see what was up if there was a reason why we weren't getting pregnant. And I found out I had fibroids, which apparently have not affected my ability to conceive. So, and everything else was healthy and looking good. So there was no reason why I shouldn't be able to have um, or get pregnant. And then um, I think I might have mentioned this before about my husband, we needed to get him to do a semen analysis, which just ended up being a total nightmare because the place we went to to get it done, there was just a load of like muck ups with scheduling and it being, you know, t turning up at a place for an appointment and then they say they didn't do it at that particular location. So that was just really annoying and it took about three or four times to actually get him in and get him seen. Um, turns out he did have some sort of infection or I'm not really sure because he didn't really talk to his doctor. Yeah, I know. All that happened was hit one of his, his white cell count was elevated and so he got put on antibiotics for that. Um, and from what I've Googled, I guess that means, you know, there's an infection, but I don't know what it was or anything. Um, so that got taken care of. I guess it was mid late November to early December. He was on the antibiotics, which is a short course of them. And then in January this year, I found out I was pregnant on January 22nd or 23rd. I can't remember. Um, I was super excited and I really wanted to tell you all um, kind of before the end of the first trimester, but I did want to just go see, get my check, you know, um, for the heartbeat at that first OB appointment uh, before telling you all. Anyway, I'm jumping ahead of myself a little bit here now. Um, so January 23rd, found out I was pregnant, absolutely overjoyed, so happy because, you know, we've been waiting a long time for this, uh, for finally a, you know, positive pregnancy test. Um, yeah, so we were over the moon. Anyway, then about a week later, I was having some pain in my leg. I was about halfway through recording the 28 day challenge at this point, and it didn't feel like muscle pain besides the fact that I'd already been doing, you know, tons of lunges and squats every day. So I knew it wasn't muscle pain and I could actually feel like a lump kind of halfway down my thigh. So I think I probably did a bit of Googling and I was like, hmm, this could be a blood clot. I also knew I was pregnant. Pregnant women are actually five times more likely to get blood clots um, than, you know, a, an exactly the same woman who isn't pregnant. Um, so I went to the ER because um, that was a whole different story about not having any urgent care on my insurance anyway that I could go to. But yeah, like I said, different different story. And it probably doesn't matter because I probably would have needed to go to ER to get an ultrasound done. So they did an ultrasound. Turns out I had a superficial thrombophlebitis, which is just a fancy way of saying um, a blood clot, but it was in one of the superficial veins. So the doctor wasn't too concerned. They didn't give me any medicine or any blood thinners or anything. Um, because I was pregnant about five weeks at that point. Um, so it was a bit awkward when I was telling, you know, everyone on Instagram and people were asking if I had medicine because obviously I wasn't able to take any of that. I wasn't able to take ibuprofen either um, because of the pregnancy. 
So, um, you know, they just said, just keep an eye on it. Then about two weeks later, it was just after my daughter's birthday, the pain in my leg started getting worse and my lower leg was swollen. Um, at this point, it was really hard walking down the stairs. I couldn't really bend my leg even. So trying to get dressed and stuff, I couldn't lift my leg up to put my pants on or whatnot and I had to get my kids to help me. Um, and yeah, it was my whole calf. It wasn't like massively swollen, but it was definitely swollen. And it was so, so tender to the touch in one particular area. Really, really hurt, super tender. And th literally the skin felt like it was gonna like explode or like rip open. It was kind of gross. Um, so the day after my daughter's birthday, I went back to ER. I was waiting for like five hours to be seen. They did another ultrasound, whole leg ultrasound, and confirmed that I actually now had a DVT, so a deep vein thrombosis, which um, is not what you want when you're pregnant. Um, I mean, not what you want any time, but you know, just particularly kind of worrying because I was pregnant. I didn't want you know to have end up with the clot breaking off and end up having pulmonary embolism. Um, that's when it goes to your lung, or it can go to your brain or whatever. So just kind of scary. At that emergency room visit, they injected me with Lovenox, which is a blood thinner. Um, it doesn't cross the placenta, so it's generally regarded as safe in pregnancy. And then um, they got me a prescription of that that was to take um, twice a day. So once in the morning, once a night, I had to inject myself in my belly. Um, I don't know if I actually still have any bruising. A little bit, maybe. Yeah, I've got a bit of a bruise here. I don't know. Um, but so that wasn't the most pleasant thing, to be honest, having to inject myself twice a day. Um, luckily, I think I'm actually kind of still numb down there from my previous C-sections, so I couldn't really feel it going in, um, cause from reviews, apparently it's quite painful. Um, I mean, it did sting a little bit and pinch, not my favorite thing, but it wasn't horrific. The deep vein thrombosis, obviously kind of worrying. And this, um, blood thinner, they put me on Lovenox. It's supposed to kind of hold the clot in place so that it doesn't break off and go elsewhere and cause issues in my body. And it also is supposed to stop my blood from clotting anymore. So it prevents more clots from building, but it doesn't actually dissolve it. Your body actually dissolves the clots itself, but it takes around three to six months for it to actually do that. Um, so I'm on blood thinners up until then. Anyway, so I, as I said, I had wanted to tell you all about my pregnancy, but I wanted to go to the doctor um, just to see, you know, the heartbeat myself, but I was going to tell you all at my nine week appointment, well, after my nine week appointment, just when I confirmed everything was fine. Um, warning, I am going to start talking about my miscarriage now, so please, um, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know where you can skip to, but it's probably just going to be the end of the video. Um, so on the morning last Monday, when I woke up, um, when I went to the toilet, I noticed there was a little bit of blood in my underwear. And then when I wiped, um, there was quite a lot of blood. It was more like period blood, kind of like a heavy period blood. Immediately, you know, I felt my stomach lurch and was like, oh no, you know, um, and was feeling very worried about that. I, um, my appointment was that day at 3.30. I considered going to urgent, uh, emergency room in the morning, but I decided not to because it wouldn't make a difference either way, to be honest, um, what the outcome was. And I can, can't really afford another $250 to go see the doctor when I was just going to see my OB that afternoon. So I did a little bit of Googling. I was somewhat reassured to see that actually um, bleeding and spotting, this wasn't spotting, but bleeding um, and spotting are very common in the first trimester. I didn't have that with my first two, but that you can actually, some women do bleed somewhat heavily and actually go on to have healthy pregnancies. So I was kind of reassured with that and the bleeding had actually stopped after that initial like first time on the toilet that morning. Um, so I just kind of, you know, tried to rest um, in, until my appointment. Pardon me. I finally saw my OB at like 4.30. It was an hour late. And um, uh, she did a, I told her, you know, when I went in straight away, I was like, I'm just freaking out a little bit because I was bleeding this morning. 
Um, and so she got out the ultrasound machine, must have been like the oldest ultrasound machine ever. And she did a trans abdominal um, ultrasound, so just on the top of my belly. And I don't remember if she was able to see this. I think she was able to see the um, sac at that point, but she said she couldn't get a very good look, so she needed to do a transvaginal ultrasound. So it's where they use kind of this little wand and they pop it up inside you um, and have a look for, um, it's just easier to see, I guess, inside the uterus. Um, again, she was looking and she was kind of saying, the sac is looking qu pretty small. Are you 100% sure of your dates? And of course I was because, you know, I've been tracking my ovulation, been tracking my periods, been tracking, you know, everything, um, taking the pregnancy tests right when I knew, you know, my period was doing things. So I was pretty sure about my dates. Um, and then obviously she couldn't see a heartbeat or see any um, fetus or embryo inside the sac but she said her ultrasound tech wasn't there, and so I needed to come back tomorrow, which was last Tuesday, to have another ultrasound with the tech um, and see if they can see something. And I kind of feel stupid when I relay this story because I didn't ask her at that time if she thought I'd miscarried or was miscarrying. I guess just because, you know, sometimes like, you don't want to know, or I felt like whatever she could answer me wouldn't be a satisfactory answer because she had me coming back the next day. So I was kind of like, there's no point in asking. Um, but obviously I went home and you know, still had a lot of questions. I mean, in my heart of hearts, I felt like probably what had happened if she couldn't see anything in a sack, you know, she's an OB, so, I feel like she is quite used to looking at ultrasounds and things. In my heart of hearts, I just felt like, you know, it, it probably was a miscarriage um, and probably it had, something had happened to make it not viable a couple of weeks before or something. Anyway, Tuesday I went in, I had another ultrasound. Um, the technician again was like, are you sure you've got your dates right? Because sometimes, you know, if people have their dates wrong, it could just be that it's measuring, um, you know, it's it's not ready yet. What am I trying to say? Because, so she measured the sac. She said the sac is measuring six weeks, three days. Um, and I was obviously at that point, I was supposed to be like nine weeks, three days. So it wasn't tallying up. And I was like, no, I'm 100% sure. and you know, she was like, well, let me just check. She was like, possible conception would have been like the 23rd of January. And I was like, no, because that's when I had my positive test on that actual date. So, you know, the conclusion was that um, something was wrong and it had just um, not continued to develop. Um, so, of course, you know, I was feeling sad about that. And I mean, I'd already kind of processed it, I think, the day before. As soon as I saw the blood, in a way, I, I kind of new, I guess, but had held on to this small slither of hope that things would be okay. Um, then I went home. Now, it's a little bit tricky because of the DVT, because I'm on blood thinners. Um, generally, when you have a miscarriage, there's three options. Number one, you can let your body take care of it naturally, and you'll probably kind of continue to bleed on and off for like two or three weeks or something. Um, number two, the doctor can give you a pill um, that you take, which I guess kind of stimulates labor and will make you kind of your uterus contract and push everything out. But apparently that's quite painful. And my OB said that a lot of people actually end up back at ER because it's extremely painful and they lose a lot of blood. Well, the issue was with me being on blood thinners, um, my OB was worried about me kind of bleeding for an extended period of time. So she spoke to a hematologist and they both came up with um, a plan for me to have a DNC procedure, which is, um, I think it's dilation and curettage. Um, so where they dilate your cervix and then they use a curette, it's kind of like a small spoon um, that kind of will scrape out your uterus to take out any of the tissue um, that's left in there. And they decided to do that because then they could control my bleeding a bit more. So they took me off the blood thinners the night before the procedure um, and the morning of the procedure. And then um, I had the procedure done and then I went back on them 
that evening. So on Friday, last Friday, I went in for the DNC. I had to be there at 5 a.m. Um, so thank you very much to my friend for taking me. I got there, got naked, put my gown on. Um, they put an IV in my hand here, which the general anesthesia goes through because they put you to sleep for this procedure. I was a little bit worried um, about that, but you're out pretty quick. I think it's like a 20 minute procedure. Um, and then to be honest, I didn't really have time to worry about things because by the time I got all ready, they'd put that in. My doctor was there and the anesthesiologist was there. And then I went in at 6 a.m. for the surgery. Next thing I know, I'd, I woke up. Um, I think I was like crying a bit when I woke up. I think it was the drugs. Um, and then I got out around 7.30. My friend was able to come back and collect me because uh, of COVID, you're not allowed anyone inside with you. But it actually wasn't as bad as I thought, to be honest because when I woke up, there was just a nurse sat with me the whole time. Um, aside from feeling quite sick, um, I you know, felt fine uh, from that. So, and then I was home by 8 a.m. and I just spent the day resting. And then Saturday, I also kind of was resting at home just with my family. Sunday, I actually, we'd planned this weeks ago to take our kids to Disneyland. So on Sunday, um, I took the kids to Disneyland. Um, and I, I was actually very happy to say that I didn't have any issues, didn't have any cramping either after the procedure. I had a bit of cramping when I woke up in the bed at the um, surgery place, but as soon as I got home, I was fine. I didn't need to take any painkillers. I was, I'd been bleeding um, on and off, not massively heavily, just a little bit filling a few pads. When I walked around at Disney, I filled a couple of pads as well, but honestly, it was fine because I was a little bit worried that that would be too much for me to do that. But I, I felt fine by that time. And then um, bleeding, it's Tuesday today, so bleeding has stopped. I think, I mean, there's like, it's more like spotting now. It's fine. Um, I think this morning I woke up, the pad was practically empty. Um, so yeah, the DMC procedure was fine, went well. And then yesterday I had my appointment with a hematologist to talk about the course of action we need for the future now. Um, excuse me, she's not sure why I got the clot, to be honest. Um, I don't have any history of it in my family. Like I said before, pregnant women are more likely, five times more likely to get clots, but I also didn't have them in my previous pregnancy. I also know fat people are more likely, I think, to get clots because of their extra pressure on your veins and things. Um, not that that's been mentioned to me by the doctors. So I know that was something I've read quite a bit about. Um, so that has kind of made me feel a little bit more like I really do need to take a lot better care of my health, especially as I'm getting older. But the hematologist is gonna do some um, more tests on me, I guess, to just check what's up with my blood. As for, tr so, and now I'm not doing the injections anymore. I don't need to take the Lovenox. On Friday, after the DNC, my doctor said if I wasn't bleeding too heavily, I could then start taking Xeralto, which is just a pill form. So I was able to take Hold on, my phone's ringing. Sorry. <laughs> on Friday after the um, DNC that evening, I started taking Xeralto. It's a pill form of a blood thinner. Um, obviously, you can't take that when you're pregnant. It's not good for you. I, I've just been so busy this past month. It's just been like appointment after appointment, you know, ER, then going to different pharmacies. I've just been crazy busy with all these things, trying to get my health sorted out. And... Yeah, it's just, it's really been insane. But honestly, emotionally, I'm in a really good place. I'm not feeling sad or depressed and I, I really am okay. And I know that, you know, the way people respond to a miscarriage varies person to person. You know, there can be reasons why people feel more impacted by a miscarriage. You know, if you've got um, infertility or, you know, the length of time you've been trying um, or multiple miscarriages, I understand there's different ways people feel about miscarriages, but honestly, I'm, I'm okay. And I wanted to also say that it's okay to be okay after a miscarriage, because that's something I've kind of struggled with is the fact that I don't feel bad. I kind of, I feel like this was my body's way of, 
you know, of nature taking care of things. Obviously, the the embryo wasn't a viable embryo, and so, you know, the miscarriage was, you know, my body's way of, of dealing with that, with taking care of it. But I feel like it's, whenever I hear about miscarriages or other people share their experience, I feel like other people have been, have, have felt so bad, and it's made me kind of feel feel bad kind of when people are saying, you know, I hope you get over this tremendous pain. And I'm kind of like, I feel guilty because I'm not in tremendous pain. I really am okay. It's okay to feel the way, there is no right or wrong way to um, experience something. And I just wanted to say that. But I also wanted to say thank you all though so much for your support and understanding and sharing all your stories with me. I feel like miscarriage is something we really don't talk about enough. And you know, it's something that affects a lot of women. You know, it's 10 to 20% of known mis uh, of mo known pregnancies actually um, miscarry. So it, there's a lot of people um, going through this. So you're definitely, you're not alone when you um, experience it and all your feelings are valid. You know, whether that's, you know, grief, utter devastation, sadness, or feeling okay, that is okay. Um, I don't think there's anything else really right now to talk about and I probably waffled on for a long time. So I am gonna say thank you for listening. Um, if you do have any questions or anything, let me know. Obviously I'm happy to talk about anything with you and I will see you all soon. Bye-bye.